Hi, it's me again. Still uh, making little bits of progress. Um, this week I haven't been able to spend much time on uh, on doing anything on the aircraft uh, due to a number of guests coming and staying and then I've got to do the washing and the ironing and cleaning and everything and and I had a hospital appointment this week and it just goes on. Anyway, uh, I have managed to do a couple of things. Uh, if I turn the camera around, I've got the fuel tank in situ. Um, what I did with that one was I followed the instructions that they give you. So I've given it a good wash out let it dry for a couple of days and then i fitted the two fittings that i need on it that's the one for the fuel outlet and then down the other end is the breather fitting sitting under there and there's obviously the fuel filler through the hole uh, I've just been trying to find a fuel filler cap. Now I know I've seen it somewhere and you know when you put something down and you think well actually that's a, probably a stupid place to put it. Um, I think I've done that. I've put it down somewhere. And I just can't remember where. I don't know whether it's in the garage here. I don't know whether it's up on the mezzanine with the rest of the stuff. Or maybe somewhere in the kitchen or lounge area when I was washing the, um, the whole thing out. Um, I know I've seen it since. I've touched it. And I know I thought it was in a stupid place. But can I remember where that was or when? No, I can't. Anyway, so getting back to uh, this, what have I done? I have finally secured the adjuster plates for the rudder pedal uh, or the rudder control cables. They're uh, all done up and um, pinned in place. Uh, I have threaded the brake pipes um, through the previously prepared holes and then realized that I didn't have any tie wraps to tie wrap them down to the holes that I drilled down here a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Um, so I need to do that. Prior to putting the tank in, I secured the two sets of tank straps in place because I knew they were going to be completely impossible to put in afterwards. Um, and actually it supports it quite nicely with them undone at the moment. Um, I didn't have to push very hard to get uh, to get it in there and it does line up exactly with the retaining plate um, which is clear code in place there at the moment and it's a perfect fit the fuel sensor uh, or the fuel sender uh, is nicely in the middle of the hole that I cut for it um, it all looks good um, I've yet to try actually doing up the the two bands that go underneath but i don't see there's going to be an issue there you can see there's a bit of space around the top so it's obviously going to go up in the air a little bit more once it's tightened up um but everything looks as if it fits um it went forward quite easily i just had to give it a bit of a pull by putting my hand through the fuel filler hole and pulling it up to the firewall and it came forward went donk and uh, then i could put the retaining plate in and it all fitted so i'm pretty happy with that one thing i did do was that there was some quite large flashings around the edge of the outside of the molding now these things are rotationally molded so they put the two halves of the mold together 
pour in a load of plastic stuff and then tumble it round and round and round and round and round and round and round. And it coats the inside up to the desired sort of thickness kind of thing. Um, and uh, the, the moulds weren't quite lined up with each other when they poured the material into it. And you can just see the remnants of a bit of an overhang on that side. Um, so I've taken off uh, any sharp pieces of flashing around the edges and made it a little bit more um, smooth around the outside, basically, before shoving it in. Seemed to do the trick, went straight in there, didn't catch on anything, really quite pleased. So that's what I've uh, been up to uh, the last couple of days. Um, I'm going to finish off getting the tank uh, installed and secured. Um, if I'm happy with it, then I'm going to pop the pop rivets in to secure it in place. Um, after I've tightened up the, the two bands underneath. And I'll let you know how it goes uh, more later. So good news everybody, the tank is in and secured. Um, I did have to uh, go out and buy some extra long bolts um, for the tank straps because it was just impossible to uh, get the two ends of the tank straps close enough together to get the bolt through and then tighten it up. So actually I've made them about twice as long as they were before. So I've got 50 millimeter um, set screws in there now. So they're threaded all the way up. And uh, that worked extremely well, a um, bit laborious. And um, I had to contort myself into a rather strange position, but uh, managed to get both bolts um, done up and uh, I've just pop riveted the um, retaining uh, angle in to hold the whole thing together. And so it looks a little bit like this. So as per the instructions, I have done the, the straps up so that they're just holding it in position and they're not tight. Um, you can still move the tank just a little bit and as you can see there's a bit of a, a gap around the outside of it. Um, this is so that when we put the fuel in uh, the tank is going to grow by about 3% which doesn't sound very much but actually if you work it out across the meter across there um, then uh, it's about uh, well it's the best well probably it's going to grow the best part of an inch um, so uh, if my calculations are correct correct me if I'm wrong that's just off the top of my head and uh, and so you need to leave a bit of space because if you tighten it up too much and you put the fuel in there uh, it's going to buckle the tank apparently and all the new kits that are coming out have got a slightly smaller tank um, they've um, changed the shape of it slightly to allow for this now but uh, this is one of the older tanks so uh, it has the potential to buckle so we'll keep an eye on that um, the other good news is at the other end I found the cap now the only way I could find a cap I spent nearly two days looking for this cap I turned the whole place upside down. I went in every possible place and I'd come to the conclusion it had gone. I'd either thrown it away or the cat had eaten it or something um, because uh, it, it was just nowhere. And in desperation, I turned to the photographs that I've taken. Uh, I've taken thousands of photographs of uh, this project over the three years um, that uh, I've been doing it and uh, lo and behold on one of the pictures I could actually see the cap in an, a used ice cream tub sitting on the shelf in doors where the racking used to be and uh, I've only got one ice cream tub that I keep stuff in 
So I went to the rack, which is now up on the mezzanine. And bear in mind, I've already looked in this tub. I looked in the tub and lifted some of the stuff out. And there it was, upside down in the bottom of the tub with a load of stuff inside it. So there we go. I had been sitting less than three feet away from it for the last few days, panicking. Um, because uh, to get another one from Sonics, I think they're about $27 to buy, but it would probably cost me the best part of $100 to get it here, <laughs> or 100 euros, or, or whatever. Um, so I wasn't looking forward to it. Um, so I've done that, um, and now I can progress on with uh, tidying up some of the other bits and pieces. I've got a little bit of wiring to do for the PTT from the um, the control stick um, and uh, a list of other little jobs, and I'm going to get on with those. But you may or may not know, I can't remember whether I actually put this in the previous video, um, but I had an issue with the... The bar, or the, um, I don't know what you'd call it, it's um, the rod that goes from the rudder horn down to the steerable wheel. Um, basically, the one that was supplied, when I tried to fit it, came down and missed the um, place where it's supposed to go into this um, plate here by about an inch, by 25 uh, millimetres. Um, and there was no way that uh, it was going to fit. So I took the dimensions of it and uh, contacted... Oh, trying to get out from underneath there. Contracted, uh, contacted Kerry at um, Technical Support, sent him a picture and the dimensions of the one that I'd got and uh, he sent me back uh, a very polite email saying, I think you've got the wrong one. I think that's for a 1X. So uh, they have um, dispatched one to me, free of charge, which is very nice. And that should be here in the next few weeks, um, Christmas being in the way. The only thing that perturbed me slightly was at the end of the, the email he said that because um, I sent him all the dimensions of what I thought it ought to be and he said well the one I'm sending you is our standard one it's not quite the dimensions that you mention um, and he said it's not uncommon to have to bend it okay <laughs> I thought with a straight rod push-pull rod that the, the possibly the best thing to do is to keep it straight. Um, if you put a bend in it, it's likely to bend even further. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, anyway, we'll wait and see what turns up. And uh, I'll update you when I go to fit it and it doesn't fit. But uh, hopefully it will. Um, I mean, obviously they've made a lot of these things. And uh, I'm not sure how many are flying now, but... Uh, there's got to be possibly a dozen flying, I'm not sure. And uh, uh, I would have thought it would have been picked up before by somebody, but who knows. I can't see that I've done anything wrong. Everything seems to fit down the back end there, but uh, that rod definitely did not. Anyway, that's enough from me for the moment, and uh, I'll get on and busy away with a few bits and pieces, and I'll update you when something interesting happens.